Ever wondered why advice from motivational speakers about narcissistic abuse sometimes doesn't sit right? Motivational speakers often inspire us, nudging us towards self-improvement and positivity. Their charismatic presence and compelling stories can make us see the world in a new light. But when it comes to the complex world of narcissistic abuse, their advice might not always hit the mark. Narcissistic abuse is a form of emotional and psychological manipulation that can leave deep scars. It's a labyrinth of control, manipulation, and emotional upheaval that isn't as straightforward as it seems. It's not just about a bad relationship or an arrogant partner. It's about a systematic, relentless form of abuse that can leave the victim feeling isolated, confused, and trapped. In this realm, well-meaning advice from motivational speakers can sometimes oversimplify the problem, offering solutions that may sound empowering on the surface, but can be misleading, and at times even harmful. The reality of narcissistic abuse is far more complicated and demands a deeper understanding than catchy phrases or one-size-fits-all advice. So why is this a problem? Because when we oversimplify, we run the risk of minimizing the victim's experience. We may unintentionally blame them for their situation, or push them towards actions that aren't in their best interest. And in doing so, we might hinder their journey towards healing and recovery. But it's not all doom and gloom. Recognizing these misconceptions is the first step towards understanding the true nature of narcissistic abuse. This understanding can lead to more effective strategies and truly supportive advice that respects the victim's unique experience and promotes real healing. So what are these misleading tips that we so often hear? Let's delve in. First on our list is the infamous, just leave, it's that simple. While it sounds straightforward, the reality is anything but. Leaving an abusive relationship, particularly one with a narcissist, is often complex due to fear, manipulation, and financial dependence. It's not a switch that can be flipped overnight. Next, we have forgive and forget. Forgiveness is a personal journey and should never be rushed or forced, especially in cases of abuse. Moreover, forgetting the abuse can be detrimental to the healing process. Emotional safety and healing should always be prioritized above all else. The third common misleading tip is, you attract what you manifest. This is a classic example of victim blaming, suggesting that the person being abused somehow attracted or deserved the abuse. The reality is that narcissistic manipulation is complex and insidious, and no one asks for or deserves to be treated this way. Then there's the advice to set boundaries and they'll respect them. Here's the thing. Narcissists are notorious for disregarding boundaries. Setting boundaries is an important first step, but enforcing them often requires professional help, legal measures, or even complete no contact. It's not a one-off task, but rather a continuous effort. Finally, we come to stay positive, focus on the good. While maintaining a positive outlook can be beneficial, it's not a panacea. Minimizing or ignoring the severity of the abuse can delay the healing process and further empower the narcissist. It's crucial to acknowledge the hurt and work through it, not just brush it under the rug. These are just the first five misleading tips. There's more to uncover. Scene script. Moving on to the next five misleading tips. Number six, they'll change if you just love them enough. This is a painfully misleading tip. Yes, change is possible, but it's rare, and it's not a result of a partner's love. It requires a narcissist's own sustained personal effort and therapy. So don't burden yourself with the responsibility for someone else's change. Number seven, get revenge. Show them they hurt you. While revenge may seem satisfying, it only fuels the cycle of abuse and can have legal and emotional consequences. Instead of focusing on revenge, focus on your own healing and well-being. That's true empowerment. Number eight, go grey rock, they'll lose interest. The grey rock method involves becoming emotionally non-responsive to provoke disinterest from the narcissist. While it can be helpful in reducing engagement, it's not a guarantee that a narcissist will lose interest. Plus, maintaining this emotional distance can be draining. Number nine, move on quickly and find someone new. Rushing into another relationship without processing the trauma of abuse can lead to repeating unhealthy patterns. It's important to prioritize healing and self-care before seeking a new partner. Remember, 
it's okay to take your time. And finally, number 10, you're stronger than you think. While it's important to acknowledge your inner strength, constantly pushing the you're strong narrative can downplay the emotional toll of abuse and invalidate the need for support. Strength doesn't mean you have to do it all alone. These 10 misleading tips are just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot more to understand about narcissistic abuse and the healing process, but remember, Trust qualified professionals and support groups over simplified motivational advice. Prioritize your emotional safety and seek professional help when needed. And most importantly, remember, you are not alone in this journey. Healing from narcissistic abuse is a complex process. A journey, not a sprint, where the path is often winding and steep. As we've explored in this discussion, there are many misconceptions about narcissistic abuse that can misdirect us. These misleading tips, while perhaps well-intentioned, can oversimplify the reality of surviving such an ordeal. Let's recap. Leaving an abusive relationship is rarely as simple as just leaving. It's a tangled web of fear, manipulation, and sometimes financial dependence. Forgiveness is a personal journey, not a mandate. And the notion that you attracted the abuse? That's a harmful myth that places blame on the victim instead of the abuser. Boundaries are crucial, yes but often not respected by narcissists. It's not about merely setting them, but enforcing them too. And while a positive outlook can indeed be beneficial, it should never be at the expense of acknowledging the severity of the abuse you've endured. Change in a narcissist is rare and doesn't come about through your love or efforts. Revenge? It might seem tempting, but it often perpetuates the cycle of abuse. The gray rock method and rushing into a new relationship can have their own pitfalls too. And while acknowledging your inner strength is vital, it should never invalidate the emotional toll of the abuse or undermine the need for support. The key takeaway here is that healing from narcissistic abuse is unique to each individual. The path to recovery may involve therapy, support groups, and a whole lot of self-care. It's about trusting your own experiences, your feelings, and prioritizing your emotional safety. It's about seeking professional help when needed and not allowing simplified advice to overshadow the complexity of your journey. Remember, you are not alone in this journey. Prioritize your emotional safety, seek professional help when needed, and never forget, you're worth it. Because you are. You are worth the journey, worth the healing, and most importantly, worth the love that you give so generously to others.